Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. In my last video, we discussed how to use the Incus OCI support or Open Container Initiative support to create Incus containers that run Docker applications. And in that video, I gave a couple of examples. And one of the examples that I gave was how to create a draw.io container and another example was how to create an application in an Incus OCI container to run the Ghost blogging platform. And the Ghost application was a little bit more complex because it involved a main application container and also a SQL database container. I've decided to name this presentation Docker in Incus is Awesome. And the reason for that is because just a couple of days ago, Brian at Awesome Open Source decided to present an application that he's been writing, which he calls Get My Open Source Self Hosted List Application to help you get your stuff done. And this was an application that he wrote for his family members that handles uh, things like shopping list and also the ability to track particular tasks like the chores his kids are doing. So with that in mind, I was looking at this application, which he presented, uh, hosted with a Docker Compose file and running in standard Docker. And this is an example of the Docker Compose file he has. And I decided to see if we could turn around and get this to work in an Incus OCI container, or actually a pair of Incus OCI containers. Let's take a closer look at the Docker Compose file that Brian has composed here. And it has two services. One of them is called GetMy, and the other one is called Mongo. So, GetMy is the actual application and Mongo is the database. In order to get the database talking to the application or more aptly, the application talking to the database, he has a links over to Mongo. And what that does is it allows the application itself to look at a Docker container named Mongo on the system and that's how it connects to the database. And we don't have exactly the same capabilities in the uh, Docker OCI containers in Incus yet, but we have something pretty close and we're gonna talk about how to achieve the same thing. So we all know that standard Docker applications are defined and they have particular tags in them. And here we have an overview of Brian's application over here on the Docker Hub. And we can look at the tags and we can see that the latest tag was pushed just nine hours ago. And then pre previous to that, we have one pushed two days ago and so on going back. So he's been involved in active development on this. And then his actual code base is over here on GitLab. And he is... Um, uh, that's where you can find all the source code and everything set up. Here we are on the demo dash one Incus server that I have. And again, a great shout out to my subscriber, Calvin, for providing me this system to prevent me from assassinating my environment at home. And if we do an Incus list here, kind of hailing from our last video, you see that I have the ghost and the ghost database which are both Docker OCI containers covered in the previous video. In order to get GetMy up and running, the very first thing that we want to do is create a container for the Mongo 4.4 database. And we have an Incus create Docker colon Mongo colon 4.4 get dash my dash DB. And the reason I'm not just calling it Mongo is because if I have a bunch of containers around, I want to know which container this database supports. 
If you notice, I used an Incas create command rather than an Incas launch command to create the database container. And the reason for that is because I wanted to create but not yet start the container because I have some other things to do with it. Next, I'm going to create the application container with an Incas create docker colon bmc g forward slash get underscore my and I'm getting the latest tag for it. And the name of this container will be get dash my, whereas the database was get dash my dash db. And then very important, I have an environment variable here. So we pass command switches in Incus with the dash c, and then we pass environment variables by using the prefix environment dot. And in this case, I'm saying mongo underbar URL and then that's going to be mongodb colon slash slash get my db. And the significance of this is that this is actually the DNS name for the database container. And the database container name is also a DNS name on the uh, Incus NAT network. So we go ahead and we create the application container as you are no doubt aware, when you create Docker containers, they are volatile and when they stop running, they don't store any persistent data unless the data is stored outside of the container. So the next step is I'm going to make a directory or make a folder called get my data. If you will recall in the last presentation where I created the ghost application, we created a ghost folder up here also. So now we have a ghost folder for the ghost data and we have a get my data for the get my application. Now that the folder is created for the database, the next step is we want to do an Incus config add get dash my dash db and that means it's adding it to the container name get dash my dash db and then we're just arbitrarily giving this thing the name MongoDB because that's kind of what it is. But that name can be anything that you like. And then it's a disk type. And the source is going to be that folder we created. And you have to provide the full path to that folder. So in my case, that's slash home slash Scott slash get dash my dash data. And then the path inside of the folder is going to be forward slash data forward slash db. And that is the area where the database is stored in a MongoDB Docker container. The last command switch is really significant here and it's shift equals true. And shift equals true allows the Docker user inside of the container write privilege back to the host folder that we created. So now it says device MongoDB added to the get my DB folder. And now we have a place for the database to store persistent data. Since both the get my container and the get my database container have both been created but not yet started out on the Incus NAT network, they are not reachable from the main LAN. And the database doesn't need to be reachable because the only thing communicating with it is the get my application. And we've already taken care of that through the last command. But now we need to provide essentially a port forward. And we do that with an Incus config device add to the get my container. And we're just arbitrarily calling this host port 3000 since when Brian developed this application, he developed it with port 3000 as the default port. And then it's going to be of type proxy. We're connecting down to the application container that Brian has created at 127.0.0.1, which of course is the loopback address. And we're accessing port 3000 on it. And then up on the Incus server, 
we're saying that 0.0.0.0 can connect, which means that anybody from the main LAN can connect through the address of the Inca server, but at port 3000. If we wanted to change that definition, we could change that port 3000 here. In looking back at the Docker Compose file, you notice that we have a ports directive and it says map port 3000 from inside the container to port 3000 back on the Docker server. And this directive here with this proxy does the same exact thing, except this is how it is done in Ancus. So we add that and we now have the port proxy on the get my container. One thing that Incus does not yet have that Docker Compose has is Docker Compose has a depends on and that is a switch that says I depend on this other thing. In this particular case, at least for right now in this initial release, I'm going to have to start the database first by doing an Incus start get dash my dash db. And if at if at this point in time I do an Incus list, you'll see that we have get my db up and running. It has an internal NAT address just like Ghost and the Ghost database. And at this point in time, the only thing that's left to do is to actually start the real application. And we can do that with an Incus start get my. And just like an application created with Docker Run or Docker Compose, it's going to present itself back on the address of the Docker server, but in this case, the address of the Incus server. So if we do an if config and we scroll up to the top of the list, we will see my bridge zero device, which I discussed in Incus container step by step, and it has the address of 172.16.1.226. And so now if I head up to my web browser and I go to that address of the Incus server at 172.16.1.226, and after it I put colon 3000, recall that that's the port number that get my port forwarded to the Incus server. So if I hit enter, here is that application. If I click the login and I click the register, here I am at the main registration page for Brian's Get My application. And just like Brian shows in his video, I can go ahead and type in my information here. Can type in my email address and the first person that registers ends up being the administrator for this system. And we type in a really super secret password here. And then I go ahead and click register and it comes up to the main page. If you don't like being blinded by the bright light, you can go to settings and click on dark mode. And then we can go ahead and idle back to the main screen. So at this point, you can go over and look at Brian's uh, video and he explains how his application works. One of the beauties of hosting this application in an Incus OCI container structure is that if we go back down to our terminal here, we can do an Incus list. And here you'll see that we have the get my and the get my database applications. Realize that as Brian updates his application and has newer versions of it, we might want to be able to upgrade that. And so the way we achieve that here is we can say Incus stop on get dash my. And then once the application stops, we can do an Incus rebuild docker colon BMC G-O-N-A-G, which is his uh, project forward slash get underscore my colon latest on the container get dash my and that will go ahead and refresh that container to its latest tag on docker whenever it gets upgraded 
And at that point, we can just turn around and do an Incas start on Get My, and we have the latest version of the Get My application. Anyway, ain't nothing to it but to do it, and that's just how simple it is to use Docker OCI containers. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. And we'll see you next time.